Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and it's 2021. The beginning of the classic races up in Belgium. Omelette Het Newsblong is today's episode. It was a great stage. The riders were greeted with cold weather, but there's no rain. There's not much wind. The conditions are fabulous for a bike race. Of course, as fans, we're still going to see a lot of crashes because it is a one-day classic up in Belgium. And when you're doing racing in Belgium, you know the crashes are coming thick and full and they're going to be on all day. And they come at any moments, the beginning, the middle, the end, the very end, in the sprint, before the sprints. They're everywhere because it is the classics. Guys are still riding on the sidewalks. They made rules for that, but they still, you see the riders all over the place. It is chaotic on these one day races. The Kunik quick step came in with force. They looked fabulous all day. With 55K to go, I want you to go back and watch those two kilometers, 55, 54, and 53. This is when the race really blows up. Today is a 202 kilometer stage, so they're only 150K into the race. This is when it really gets the action starts happening. You're going to see on the road, it's a four, four lane road more or less. They're 20 wide on the road and they're only 10 deep. Every inch of space is being used on these Belgian roads every time when you come down to the thick of the action. 55k, you'll start seeing guys riding off the side of the road. They go into a right turn. Guys that had spent an immense amount of energy for the last few k's trying to start the front are now flying off into the ditches on the side of the road you have deep trenches there's no place for the riders to really save when they get bumped off the road you get bumped off in these belgian races and it's into the ditch bikes are flying into the air all that energy that riders had spent to really start these next seven eight big hard bergs of climbs it's all wasted You'll see when they make the right turn right at about 54K to go, guys go flying off on the left side of the road. Now that guy's energy that he spent trying to start at the front, he's 200 meters off the back, his day's over. The next left turn, guys flying off the ditch again. This is classic Belgian racing at its best, and it's like why we like to watch. You know it's a hard man's course. You've got to fight hard on the flats. You've got to fight before the corners. You've got to fight before you, the climb starts. You've got to fight going up the climb, and then you've got to make it over the climb with the best one-day riders in the world. The, the action started there at 55K. Then at 42K on two or three climbs later is when we see Matteo Trenton putting the hammer down and causing a split amongst the favorites at this year's race. Tom Paddock, i have got to do a mention for the young kid. He's 21 years old. This is his first year racing pros. He did an amazing job to jump across from the back of the field to get into that group of favorites. He had one other rider with him. Those two closed the gap. Amazing job. Now, better job would have been to be in there at the front to begin with when Mateo went and followed him directly. But he's a young kid. There's a lot of guys. And sometimes you just miss that turn or you get blocked out before that climb started. He makes a bunch more mistakes, but I'm still really impressed with his strength. When he jumps across, that was a big jump to go across to world champion Julian Alaphilippe pulling on the front. Greg Van Avermont, Seth Van Mark. Davide Ballerini, I mean, all the big names are up there, right? Not any of us could just jump across the gap like that. So clearly Tom has some great form. He makes some more mistakes though. With 32K to go, Julian Alaphilippe throws in a big attack up the Berg and goes solo from there. And you'll see Tom Pedock makes another mistake where he tries to go across, but he waits till after the climb to go across because he started at the back of the group. Now, the first time when he missed the split, I can really understand that. There's a lot of guys around you. This is your first big race. You misjudged the corner or the start of the climb and you started at the back. Nothing you can do. You got to spend the energy to jump the gap. But when Julian Alaphilippe goes at 32K to go, Tom has to be on his wheel before that climb starts or at least one, two guys behind it for sure. Because it's Julian Alaphilippe, it's no secret. Julian Alaphilippe basically sent out a fax to all of us fans watching that I'm going on this climb or the next. He's not going to wait for the field sprint, right? My belief is he should have waited for the field sprint. When you got Davide Ballerini in that group, he's clearly the fastest sprinter. He is your teammate. You got another teammate in there with Stybar. So there's three Dekunic quick step riders. 
to me it didn't make any sense for Julian Alaphilippe to be going up the road when you have the fastest sprinter in the group. There's three of you total. You can easily control that group of 15 plus or minus riders all the way to the sprint and win this with Davide Ballerini. Instead, Julian Alaphilippe tries to go solo. He's the showboat. He loves putting on a show and he wants to win in dramatic style. And so, of course, he's going to go solo. Tom Paddock should have known that, been on his wheel. Instead, he wastes it over the top when he tries to go. Can't close the gap, wastes a lot of energy. The group catches behind, tries to go again. That's the third or fourth mistake that he made. Can't close the gap. The group catches from behind. Now the group's not really cohesive. They're not gaining time on the peloton be behind. Julian Alaphilippe is blowing in the front, which is allowing them to catch him. But as soon as they catch Julian Alaphilippe, the field from behind catches. And now we're going to have the Kunit quick step riding on the front for Davide Ballerini, who they already had in the group of 15. Now they got to get Davide Ballerini into those last corners without any crashes. Now, the big problem here is you got to remember you have Alexander Kristoff from UAE Team Emirates, and he is a man for the sprint. When it comes to a hard one day race, a hard stage race that's just gritty, cold, wet, grimy crosswinds, Alexander Kristoff's resume is made for this. He is a sprinter and he's one of the best in the world, but when it comes down to these really hard races and everybody's tired, he wins often. I would not have wanted to see if Davide Ballerini was going to win if I'm de Kunit quick step watching it with Alexander Kristoff back there giving him a hard time, if not winning today's race anyways. Instead, you'll see Alexander Kristoff overlaps with his teammates. When he overlaps with his teammates' wheel, we see him out the back of the group of 55 riders there. Looks like he's got a flat tire, but if you listen closely to the film, you can hear a spoke tapping the frame every time it's coming by, tapping the back brake or the frame or the disc brake back there, whatever it is he's got on his bike. And now he's out of the race. That leaves Davide Ballerini and Dekunit Quick Step with really good, good odds of winning today's race. Now, when you watch the very last right hand turn, Casper Asgreen's on the front. He took it from about 1K to about 500 meters to go. He swings off left, and in comes the two Dakuna Quick Step riders. Davide Ballerini sitting second. It's, who was it, Florin Sinchal that's, that's leading them out. What's beautiful about this that I want you to look closely, Casper Asgreen could have easily just swung wide, and we've talked about this often on the Butterfly Effect. When you're doing a lead out, you don't just swing out wide left or right and get out of the way. You swing off a little bit, you let your guys come in, and then you go tight to the back wheel. When he does, that pushes the two riders behind him, Sepp Van Mark and I believe it was Philippe Gerbert, and it opens that gap up on those two riders, and that allows the two Dakuna Quick Step riders a little bit of a gap, and now they got the win. It's guaranteed. They go into the final left, and Davide Ballerini with 150 meters to go hits the front. It's game over, opens a gap, and a beautiful win for Dakuna Quick Step, who don't win often at Onlep Het Nuzblan. They've been at this race many, many times, and they've come up short many, many times for a team that wins just about everything when it comes to the classics and a lot when it comes to the big stage races. So today, hats off to Kunit Quick Step. They did a fabulous job. It's really amazing when you watch that you can waste so much energy with Julian Alaphilippe. You could have Steinick Steibart crash when he was in the front group, and you can still have the group come back together and then still win with Davide Ballerini. That's when you know the team like the Kunit Quick Step is firing on all cylinders. And we're going to get to watch them for the next couple months here in the big spring classics and be just thrilled by the kind of power that they have and how well they race as a group together. So, hope you enjoyed today's butterfly effect. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys real soon because it's 2021 and the season just started. See you guys later.